There's an awful lot of fighting and assault that occurs between uh, kids. Good kids get involved in youth violence. So we typically refer to the age group between 10 and 24. Violence right now is a leading cause of death among young people in this country. In communities where they see violence around them all the time, it's very easy for them to begin emulating it. We probably spend more on violence than pretty much any other community issue. We just spend it all after the fact. After the fact, locking children up is not really prevention. Ask the Messengers TV show is a TV show that educates, informs, and entertains our viewers on public health issues such as mental illness, suicide, addiction, illness and disease, COVID-19 relief, crime, domestic violence, homelessness, human trafficking, employment opportunities, health care, and more. And now, Ask the Messengers. Uh, my name is Derek Hill, and uh, I'm just honored to be here to be able to host a co-host uh, Men in Recovery series, the Ask the Messenger TV show. Uh, the gentlemen that uh, you'll see on today's show uh, all have a story of recovery. You know, uh, it's been said that uh, recovery is not always from substance abuse, but that men and women can recover from just an array of, uh, of different things. And uh, today, the men that we'll, we'll see on today uh, are men who are recovering from uh, incarceration uh, with the criminal justice system. These are men who have gotten out and uh, been able to put their lives back together. Um, now, I can relate to that because I myself uh, is a person who is in long-term recovery. So uh, I know what it's like to have gone through uh, some very difficult times in life and uh, have worked through those uh, and been able to overcome a lot of those setbacks and, and stumbling blocks and ob obstacles due to the, to the choices that we have made. Uh, so yes, uh, I can applaud these young men and uh, here's their stories. Okay, welcome back. Uh, again, this is Derek Hill, co-host for Men in Recovery. Uh, we're joined now by Minister Jeffrey E. Hicks, Sr. And uh, Mr. Hicks is going to share his story with us on this morning. Hi, Jeffrey. How you doing, sir? Oh, really blessed, Derek. Really blessed. Yeah, thank you. And welcome. Uh, welcome. And thank you for being here uh, with us on today. Uh, I'm just going to let you go right into your story and uh, share uh, with our viewers uh, your experience uh, with incarceration and how you managed to find your way back. Yes, uh, it's, it's a story of total success in my life with Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I turned myself in 20 October 16th, 1991 at eight o'clock in the morning. And I was released October 16th, 2018 at eight o'clock in the morning. The Lord held my hand and walked me through that an entire 27 years. And he prepared me for coming out of the penitentiary. He prepared me with people that supported me, Greater Grace, uh, Pastors Earlene and her husband, praise God, of the outreach team. We were just tremendously supportive. He allowed a woman who I met it lasted 18 years who waited for me to come home for 18 years. My beautiful wife, Laura. Amen. And I thank God for it. When I first come home, I lived in a halfway house. But the Lord said, Jeff, I want you to go to college. I went to college for two years and got my first associate's degree in culinary arts. Then I doubled back and took a culinary, took a arts degree. I'm on my last semester of a associate in the theater and arts. God is in the blessing business. And he held my hand, not only in the penitentiary, but also in the world. You'll meet kind of, you'll meet a whole lot of pitfalls and stuff, but don't worry about it. Cause God has your back. He's has your life charted and your future is headed forward. Be encouraged every day in the penitentiary and out of the penitentiary. 
because the Lord Jesus Christ is doing something tremendously special in your life. Your incarceration is a testimony that can be used for people of all creeds all around this country. Just live your life like you know that the Lord loves you and learn to love others. God will give you everything you need to succeed. He'll give you everything you need. All you have to do is learn how to submit, surrender, and yield to his lordship. Once you do that, you'll see change affected in every area of your life. God is so good, and he loves you so much that he has stopped time to let you know, son, I am with you. I am for you. Come home and be an asset and never a liability. Your family loves you. The family ties that I made when I came home, I have five children, 12 grandchildren, and four great-grandchildren, three boys and one girl. My wife and I are living a life sponsored by Jesus that has set us on fire. I am so full of what God has done and what he will do. He wants to see you home. He wants to see you home succeeding. He wants you to be a success because you are a part of a royal kingdom and we are kingdom strong in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you. Jeffrey, we thank you so very kindly for those powerful words of encouragement. And uh, we, <clears throat> we continue to wish you great success. And um, we, we, we're, we're very hopeful that all of our guests on today have been uh, an encouraging inspiration to our viewers, those that are listening, uh, be encouraged that there is life after death. Uh, there's no, nothing too great that God cannot heal. The heaven, the earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Amen. Amen. And thank you once again, and God bless. God bless you. Stay tuned for more of Ask the Messengers. Derek Hill, and I'm your co-host for Men in Recovery. Our guest today is Rasul Warren. Uh, Rasul, thank you for being with us on today. Thank uh, you for having me. Yes, uh, we're talking about men who has been incarcerated and uh, who have transitioned themselves back into the community and who are uh, accomplishing great things on today. Rasul, you care to share with us some of your experiences? What I learned is that in the time of incarceration, People incarcerated, they go in, you get three meals, you work out, you get, go to school, and um, you basically live in your lifestyle as that there. So my experience was, out of 17 years, was that I'm going to go home, get me an apartment, because I got an apartment in prison. <laughs> I'm going to get me a job because I worked in prison. I'm going to go to the gym when I go home because I worked out. In, <clears throat> I worked out in prison. And I'm going to get me a, a, a nice job. And also, I'm going to find me a wife and when I come home. And that's exactly what I did. I kept the same mentality. But I say I'm going to work because they make you work in there. I'm going to work out <clears throat> because I worked out. I'm going to go ahead and get married, find someone I can be with. And on the outside, what I did, I stuck to that. And when I stuck to that, I went to church also okay. in prison. So I found me a church home when I got out and I found me friends from church. So in the midst of all that is, I got out and I, I stuck to that program and uh, it worked for me. But as far as uh, letting people know my experience of getting there, you know, getting to prison is easy. It's a wide gate. You know, as God say, have a wide gate and a narrow gate. It's easy to go through the narrow gate. The wide gate as it is today is for these kids who's going through that wide gate. They need, uh, what's the word before? They need some guidance because it's very different. It's very different today. Okay. As it was back then when I was going through it. Now you, so, 
now you said it's easy to go through the narrow gate, but see, it's easy to go through the wide gate. All yes, right, the narrow gate. Yeah. Right, right, that's what I meant. I'm sorry. All right, okay, that's what I meant. Okay, okay. So, you know, my message is to really for children today is that that's a place they don't want to go. Prison has changed. It used to be. I'm, I'm gonna be honest. I was just telling my wife this the other day. When I was there, you know, you had street clothes, cash money, tokens, you know, your, your wife come up, do your hair or whatever, and this and that. You know, prison is now more of a gang gang facility. And uh, my suggestion is for kids today is find a hobby, find something to do, find religion. You know, I, I know, you know, me as a Christian, a lot of children don't believe in Christianity because coming out of prison, they're more of Muslims and uh, Mobites, you know, which I went through all of that until I found Jesus. So, you know, the message is to find something to encourage you positive, you know, cling on to something that positive because you don't want to be doing 20 or 30 years in there, you know, in no prison behind no wall today or no time. So, you know, what I tell my kids and grandkids, I got my grandkids here right now, as I told you. I'm in Dayton, Ohio, and I have three grandboys here and a granddaughter. And, you know, you have to start there, you know, and let these kids know with rules. <clears throat> Excuse me. You got to have rules. You know, you got to set boundaries, you know, with children, you know. And a lot of parents are not spending time with their children. Kids are raising their parents and the parents are not raising them you know, from what I see. So, um, you know, I just try to inspire them, lift them up, teach them about scriptures, you know, teach them, you know, show them life, you know, besides just every day what they do. You know, you got to sit and spend time with them. So, you know, as I said, me being in prison, it taught me a lot. It, you know, it taught me how to become a man. It taught me how I, I, I had to go to work <clears throat> in prison. You know, I didn't call my mother for money. You know, I got a job. An old man told me in prison, you don't get on the phone <clears throat> and call your mother. You put yourself in this situation. So I got a job, you know, and I, 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 I hate to say it, but I grew up there, you know, and it made me come a man and have a more on look on life. You know, what I want to do instead of sit there, eat, sleep on a cot and go to a yard, you know. So I think, you know, it taught me a valuable lesson to come home, learn to uh, accept your freedom, you know, accept your freedom, be able to do what you want to do. You're not confined to gates. You're not confined to, ru to rules. And ever since, I haven't been back. I have a home, a wife. I go to Greater Grace. I, matter of fact, I work at Greater Grace. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I uh, I'm just, I, I'm, I'm doing, in terms of here, I'm doing a prison bit outside the walls today, but I'm not in prison. Okay. I have, you know, and I am, I'm just trying to say this. I don't sleep in a cot bed. I have a king size bed and I'm telling these young people this, enjoy life, get a job, file taxes, you know, find you a base church home, <clears throat> you know, enjoy your children your grandchildren soon to be, your mother. Because in prison, I used to think I lose my mother. My mother's right here with me in the hotel with her great grandkids right here looking at me talk, matter of fact, and my wife, right. you know, that's the whole thing. You will lose your family. I lost my dad in prison, you know, that's the hurting thing. So when you out here messing up, robbing, stealing, shooting, Channel 2 News, I barely watch it. You know, they, they it, I don't know what's going on. I don't, it's evil to me, you know, and it's the upbringing, you know, and I feel sorry and I pray for these kids, you know, you know, it, it's terrible. So my message is remain free. If you got any issues at home with your mother, father, you know, let it go, you know, just find another way. Don't, don't find a way just to go to the streets, you know, find you something to do, pray, because it works, it works. So that's my message. All right, Rasul, we thank you so very kindly. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, the Bible says that well, we are delivered by the way of our testimony, and that's a very powerful testimony. Mm -hmm. Hopefully our young audience, young and old as well, uh, alike, uh, will take that to heart 
and be encouraged and be inspired. Exactly. Powerful word. And we mm -hmm. thank you, thank you. Again for being with us on today. We'll be right back with more of Ask the Messengers. Would you like to help us save lives? You can do so by partnering with us here at Ask the Messengers by making a donation of any amount. The people in your communities need your support. Help us extend our reach and impact more lives. Supporting our organization is as easy as a click of a button. Just visit our site shown on the screen from your phone or computer where you will see a yellow donation button. Ask the Messengers is waiting on your partnership and your community is waiting on you. Sam, welcome. Uh, first, let me say, these are men who have defied the odds, who have been able to overcome many adversities and many setbacks. Uh, we have with us Sam Birch. Sam, would you like to tell us your story on this morning? Thank you, Brother Derek, for allowing me to be on Ask the Messenger. It's a wonderful program to talk to you about the recovery that I received through when I was incarcerated. Uh, matter of fact, 20 years ago, uh, I was incarcerated in Scott's facility and with a life sentence. And Mr. I mean, so excuse me, Bishop David Lee Ellis, that's the pastor of Greater Grace Temple. He came to the prison and asked me in a life prison how much time these folks gave me. And the whole building, we all have life. But he told me, he said, but you are not going to do life. And God delivered me 12 years later after Bishop David Lee Ellis spoke those prophetic words. And yes, I was incarcerated with life sentence. And when I came out, I came straight to Greater Grace Temple and I got up under the umbrella as Pastor Earlene Edwards, she instructed us as she came to the prison to tell us about Christ and to tell us about recovery. Cause when I got out, I went to the recovery there at Greater Grace Temple. And I thank the messenger for having me on the day to reiterate on all of those wonderful uh, opportunities that I have with Greater Grace Temple. And I thank the messenger for allowing me to let brothers know that if you are incarcerated, you can be incarcerated, but if you get with Jesus in your incarceration, your time won't be as bad as it could be without him. I'm a living witness. And also I does Sammy Davis Jr. impersonations. And uh, I thank God that he, when he delivered me, when he brought me out through those prophetic words, he not only did he sustain me as I'm out, he continued to make me prosper. And I thank, like I said, I thank Brother Hill. So the brothers and sisters know that when you come out, if you can just get with you a good church, I will, I will suggest Greater Grace Temple. I mean, it's on you. But I would love for you to come there under the anointing of our bishop. Man, he's a wonderful bishop. He's the, the son of David Ellis. His name is Charles H. Ellis III. And we would love to see you at Greater Grace Temple because that's where um, all of my, my successes began following God through that temple. And like I was telling everyone, the recovery situation is very wonderful. And, and, and God can clean you up and you can be successful as I and other brothers that came out. So I believe that anyone that's coming through uh, transitioning back into life, uh, I would suggest that you would connect with a sanctified spiritual field church, good teaching, good preaching, and uh, also listen to the messenger. They ask the messenger, they give good points of views. Well, Sam, we thank you so very kindly for those inspiring words and uh just for our viewing audience uh, i want you to know that sam is in fact uh, one of our entertainers uh who performs every week and down at the birch marketplace and uh these are these are men who have uh overcame uh many many obstacles many adversities and many setbacks uh men who have been incarcerated and who have in fact been able to put their lives back together again Sam, we'd just like to thank you again for being, for being guests here on our show. And uh, we, met, we wish you much success, young man. Sam, 
Sam, yeah. give, us a little, give us a little Sammy Davis right quick. You a fighter, you a lover. You strong and you recover from whatever gets you down. And there are so many, many reasons. Any time, any season. Hello, Detroit. You won my heart. Your renaissance and waterfront give you that flame. Irresistible you. Hug and kissable you. You're alive with so much feeling. And I will always be there for you. I will say a little prayer for you. And I will always care for you. Hello, hello, Detroit. All right, Sam. <laughs> if you've been scheduled to sign your expungement application and complete your fingerprinting, here's what you can expect the day of your appointment. There, you will walk through four stations. At Station 1, you'll receive a copy of your Internet Criminal History Report, also known as iChat. You'll then be asked to review the information on the expungement application. At Station 2, a staff attorney will review your charges and address any discrepancies on your iChat. Station 3 is where you'll sign the application and have it notarized. And lastly, Station 4, you'll have your fingerprints recorded to verify your identity. If you are a resident of Detroit and interested in our free expungement services, register at www.detroitmi.gov forward slash project clean slate to see if you are expungement ready. Well, that concludes this week's episode of Ask the Messengers. We also invite you to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, if you would like to support our show, please feel free to make a donation of any amount by visiting our show website, www.askthemessengers.org. If you prefer to mail donations, please make your check or money orders payable to Ask the Messengers TV Show and send to 18400 Schaefer Highway, Detroit, Michigan, 48235. Ask the Messengers is a program that deals with things that help you. Thank you.